I am presenting this in response to a video by Christy Ann, entitled, The History of the Jehovah's Witnesses, Part 1. I am not with the Jehovah's Witnesses. I am a Bible student as was Charles Taz Russell. The video presents many things that are not true about Brother Russell. I do not fault Christy Ann personally for this. She appears to be reading from what some others have written, so I would say that the greater fault lies with those who fabricated the many false misrepresentations about Brother Russell. The first thing I wish to address is that Russell was never a member of the Jehovah's Witnesses, and certainly not the founder of the Jehovah's Witnesses. Joseph Rutherford created the Jehovah's Witnesses by rejecting the core teachings of Russell and the Bible students. The video speaks of Russell's true followers. I must clarify that I do not follow Brother Russell in all that he teaches. Some may claim to follow Brother Russell exclusively, but I do not. I follow Jesus through what is presented in the Bible. That is what Brother Russell himself taught that one should do. I follow Brother Russell or any other Bible teacher only in that each may help me to a clearer understanding of the Bible. The claim is made that at an early age Russell rejected the doctrine of eternal punishment. Actually, Russell never rejected the biblical doctrine of eternal punishment. He did reject the idea that eternal punishment meant eternal conscious suffering. The claim is made that Brother Russell went into a career of denunciation of organized religion. Russell never spoke of organized religion. He did, however, believe that God does not approve of all the various sects and denominations that separate Christians. Nevertheless, his views were a lot different, sometimes the very opposite, of what the Jehovah's Witnesses teach. Russell also preached against organizations that would seek to control God's people. In effect, although there was no Jehovah's Witnesses organization at that time, Russell's general teaching is against such an organization. The video states that Russell's magazine has grown beyond Russell's expectations. In reality, I highly doubt that Brother Russell would want anything to do with today's Watchtower magazine. The Watchtower as Russell designed it to be, in effect, ceased to exist shortly after Russell died. The video mentions a split in the organization over the release of Volume 7. This could be misleading, since Brother Russell himself did not believe in an organization such as Rutherford created after Russell died. Over the years, Brother Russell several times spoke against such an organization. Brother Russell stated, there is no organization today clothed with authority. Watchtower, September 1, 1893, page 262. In 1915, Russell stated concerning the Bible students, there would be nothing to come out of, as an organization, if one is an international Bible student. Watchtower, July 15, 1915. And just before his death, he stated concerning the Watchtower Society, let it be borne in mind that the society exercises no authority, makes no criticism, but merely gives advice, and that in the interest of the Lord's cause and the Lord's people. Watchtower, August 15, 1916, page 248. This, of course, began to change shortly after Russell died. Nevertheless, by 1928, the vast majority of the Bible students around the world had rejected Rutherford's organization dogma. Rutherford's group at that point was smaller than the Bible students as a whole. Rutherford, however, having formed an organization, preached a message with greater appeal to the carnal mind, and thus his group increased rapidly. The video presents some quotes from the Brooklyn Daily Eagle about Brother Russell as supposedly illustrating Brother Russell's character. Actually, the Brooklyn Daily Eagle's one-sided misrepresentation of Brother Russell fails to provide a proper illustration of Brother Russell's character. This is like going to the Pharisees who wished to kill Jesus to get information about the character of Jesus. 
the description given of the subsidiary companies is highly misleading. There were some who thought that the Watchtower Society itself should not get involved in business transactions not directly involved in preaching the gospel. Thus, it was decided to create a company, the United States Investment Company, to handle such transactions aside from the society. Brother Russell contributed $900 of his own money for the startup while others contributed a total of $100. The sole purpose was to handle investments and transactions for the Watchtower Society that were not directly pertaining to the spreading of the gospel, such as ownership of land and other properties. Russell, himself, did not get any of the money from the transactions made by the United States Investment Company, nor from the subsidiary companies, such as the United Rosemont Cemeteries. It is falsely claimed that Brother Russell owned 990 shares of the stock of the Watchtower Bible and Track Society and therefore any contributions to the society were actually to him. Such is ridiculous and fabricated. The Watchtower Society never issued any stock shares at all, nor did any of the subsidiaries issue any stock shares. The Watchtower Society did issue voting shares, and Brother Russell did at one time hold most of these voting shares, but several years before his death, he gave those voting shares to others. After his death, Rutherford claimed those voting shares were not valid. The idea that he had 990 shares of the alleged stock, however, evidently is a distortion of the fact that he put up $900, not $990, for the startup of the United States Investment Company. The court's decision does not vindicate the Eagle's statement that the Watchtower Society was nothing more than a money-making scheme. The Eagle did bend and twist and distort facts to make it appear to be so. The court decision, however, was based on the fact that there was not enough proof that say that the Eagle was guilty of libel. Evidently, what was needed was proof of the eagle's intent. The proof that was to be presented was not allowed due to legal technicalities. Having failed to present proof of intent to assault Russell's character, the decision was to dismiss the claim of libel. The video makes much ado about Russell giving imaginary sermons. It is being claimed that in many cases, the sermons were never delivered. Actually, in only one instance is it shown that Brother Russell did not deliver the sermon as reported in the newspapers. It was, and still is, common practice for speakers to send news releases to newspapers beforehand. The Watchtower Society did the same on behalf of Brother Russell. In Hawaii, however, the ship arrived late and everyone on the ship was sick, so Brother Russell failed to give the sermon. Evidently, no one thought to notify the newspaper to cancel the news release, and thus the report of the sermon was published. At about 13 minutes into the video, it sounds like it states that Russell promoted laws as being organizations of the devil. I am not sure that this is what is stated, but it seems that this may be actually confusing Rutherford with Russell. Russell never spoke of organizations of the devil. I would have to know what, if anything, in Russell's writings is being referred to about earthly governments and organizations of the devil, etc., but I think it is possible that things Rutherford taught are being confused as being what Russell taught. Regarding J.J. Ross, Ross certainly knew how to use words to make the message of the good news of great joy that will be for all the people, that Brother Russell preached, appear to be something opposite of what it is. Nevertheless, I can say that the exposure of what the Bible actually says about hell is definitely destructive of the popular false teachings about hell. I can say that the exposure of what the Bible says about the atonement is certainly destructive of the popular false teachings often promoted about the atonement. I can say that the exposure of what the Bible teaches about Christ's return is definitely destructive to the popular false teachings often promoted about Christ's return. The same with many other teachings. The teaching of what the Bible actually states would surely make some of the preachers of man's creeds and doctrines upset. 
Ross, however, presented a lot of false claims about Brother Russell. Brother Russell brought charges against Ross for libel. Libel in Canada at that time was not matter of a civil suit. The reason Russell lost the case against Ross, however, was that the judge of the court, in charging the grand jury relative to its duties, among other things, said to the jury, unless the jury finds that this alleged libel would cause a breach of the public peace in Canada then no indictment should be returned, but the parties should resort to civil suit for damages. The jury returned no bill, and it is manifest that they could not have done otherwise under this charge of the court, for the reason that Pastor Russell lived in Brooklyn, New York, and Ross lived in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, and it would be physically impossible for the libel to cause a breach of the public peace when the parties were so far apart. Pastor Russell did not resort to a civil action for damages, for the reason that he was advised that such an action would be useless, since Ross was irresponsible financially and could not be compelled by such a proceeding to publish a retraction. For documentation and more information about what I have stated, see the website links provided in the description.